You've got 23 days to the 32nd Olympic Games and 54 days to the 16th Paralympic Games. And at this point, what can you change if you were going there to compete? Very little. Why? Because growth takes time. Crops take the whole life, 120, 180 days to mature. Trees take a lifetime. We have one life and the Olympic flame is lit in us and we see ourselves on that stage with a chance to be on the podium and hear our country's anthem. Unless you are born smart, gifted, talented, and privileged, you will need 831 people or more to help you live your best life. But the Sporkology research shows us it's the average, it's almost every category of importance who will be at the games are people that are average. Parents are so important in how they raise a child, but I can summarize it in one statement. What we found was Olympic and Paralympic parents are more concerned with preparing you for life and how to handle it than they were being able to handle anything else, especially a sport. I'm Jungle Jim Hunter, and you're listening to 831, Living Your Best Life, where we inspire participation, communicate precision, and empower performers to podium. And I hope that you will go to your favorite podcast provider and Tell your friends and relatives and co-workers to go there or to junglegymhunter.com or YouTube and subscribe, download, click on like, rate and review us and become an 831er, someone that is inspired to live their best life by this podcast and will in turn inspire others. So let's go on the journey to the Olympic and Paralympic Games together and explore what it takes to build the confidence to become an Olympian. Where does confidence come from? What is it? How do we get it? How do we get more of it? How do we keep it? The word has eight definitions, and I believe that we would all accept the fact that we need to have confidence to believe we could reach for the biggest dreams in our lives and become an Olympic or Paralympic champion or a champion at whatever it is that you dream of doing. I was taught the origin of the word from Latin, and it is not about being confident that matters, but rather what we have confidence in. Recently, a survey was done asking people which would they rather have, stand on two feet of ice with confidence or stand on two inches of ice and have lots of confidence. The answer surprised me, and I am sure it will surprise you until you realize that we're all this way. The answer was the latter. Further research showed that we would rather have the confidence in ourselves and what we can do than in the thickness of the ice. The very thing that would keep them from drowning. The original meaning was to believe in or have faith in what has been made. You can have as much confidence in yourself that you desire to have as long as you have made it. What you can brag about or boast about that you have. But until it has to be tested and put to the test, you won't know and don't know if you will have the ability to see it through. You also don't know if you will be good enough until after you exercise it with all your abilities to see it through with your competitors. Let me try and demonstrate how I arrived at the place where I used a simple formula that works and may help you to develop your confidence. I was born to think when something went wrong or had to be done to ask what's important now. In my mind, it became when. The word W period, I period, N period. What's important now? It puts you in the present situation that as you are living, it becomes the past. In other words, what you did in that present moment, as soon as it is done, it becomes the past. It didn't take me long before I realized I had to think then, do what was my best first response. If it worked and I solved the problem, I learned something that made my handling of it in the future even better. This meant if I did what's important now, that in that moment, that became the past. Acting upon it was better than stepping back and waiting for someone else to fix the situation. And as a result, I had the power to grow. Knowing I had the power to grow made me have confidence. Now can become the word own. You can flip the letters around, which meant I own the moment, thus own the problem. This raised my confidence even more, meaning whenever it happened again, I owned that challenge. Once owned, I changed those three letters one more time. That meant I was prepared for the future because I learned from the past, able to handle what happens in the present, and as a result, my future is already won. I know I'm fearfully and wonderfully made and have what I need to be all that I can be. So if I can grow by learning how to remake the challenges that I'm faced with, and as a result, 
I build confidence. I don't have to wait for someone to tell me how, but will seek to find the best of the best of the best to teach me how to have even more ability to face the challenges, thus building more confidence. If I do what's important now to the best of my ability and overcome the challenge, I own that challenge. The next time I'm faced with that challenge, I own it and my future is already won. I've said this before, the medals starting in 24 days that will be handed out have already been won by those up to the challenge before them. So why have the games? Well, this is the best part. Every human being has a past and a present and a future. Our past is the sum total of all that has gone into us from what life has handed us. What we have been taught, you are your own gatekeeper and determine what you believe at your core, your emotional level. Your core is your emotional level. Your first response in every situation starts with an emotional response. It's not technical skill. It's not physical capacity. It's not mental training, but at the emotional level. This is what we teach here at the Sportcology Institute. Every person in our life influences us and has an impact on that shaping. There is no doubt in my life, my parents were amazing, especially my dad. I love my parents and they sacrificed and gave so much, but they also gave me an emotional look and view of life. According to my dad, I was going to be a hockey player that went to the highest educational facility in the world. And this was all determined in his mind before the age of 10. Then I smashed my head on a cement floor on June 21st, 1963 and ended up in a coma for a long time. My parents were not psychologists, and there were none around in 1963, but my mom and dad had to prepare me for life anyway, so I had to start over. I loved ski racing and fell in love with it, and they let me chase it as long as I was growing, and I ended up on the podium six and a half years later without going to school. I mean, by not going to school, well, I was there, but only temporarily until I made the national ski team and started traveling around the world. The challenge was met to become the best skier in the world. But as I stood in the start for the first race in the downhill, I hear my father's voice in my head. You'll never be good enough. You'll never be good enough. Where did that come from? And then I realized that in that pressure moment, he thought that when he watched me train, that saying that would inspire me to work even harder. It did at first, but what we say when we are physically working as hard as we possibly can, and someone else says something that attacks you emotionally, and you have not learned how to overcome that challenge inside your heart, it paralyzes your ability to perform. All the athletes headed to Tokyo are emotional beings as well as the greatest athletes in the world. They've overcome inertia and done the work. They've overcome the ability to focus, the discipline to train, the technical skill it takes to compete. But at the greatest pressure point, the Olympic Games, in their competition, they will ever know. It will be a silent whisper heard in their head by a parent, a coach, a competitor, a teammate, a friend that places doubt in the center of the track and kills their confidence. What about you? Where's doubt waiting to whisper to wash out your dreams? Where do you let those emotional feelings stop you from moving forward? I want to talk about it for the next couple of podcasts about how to build confidence. I want you to think about it and think about where your emotions take you. My quote for the day, to compete, you need to complete training spiritually, tactically, technically, physically, mentally, but most important, emotionally. Thank you for listening. And I hope you will have grown by the next time we meet.